In this video, I'm going to share with you the ultimate tech stack that I prefer for all of my real world and hobby projects. We are going to fill up all of these columns here and I'm going to give you both open source free options plus some options that are worth paying for. So let's start with the framework. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I use and love Next.js and that's because it's currently the best full stack framework out there. You already know a lot of features from Next.js like optimization, SEO, SSR, etc. I'm not going to talk a lot about that. Thing that I love the most from Next.js is that I have only one command, npx create next app latest, and I put it inside of my terminal and I don't have to think about anything. It's coming with all the configuration that we need. We have Tailwind, we have ESLint, we have everything that we need to start one project and we don't have to think about anything. The second thing is the enormous community. They have over 5 million weekly downloads, which is really impressive. They're constantly building new features and following all the trends that one framework of this caliber needs. Second one is from the same house like Next.js, Vercel Hosting. Just a disclaimer, I'm not sponsored by them. It's again the simplicity. One follows the other and deploying Next.js application to Vercel is the easiest thing you can do. You just click import from your GitHub repo and click deploy and that's it, nothing else. So you have everything set up and you have your Next.js application up and running live. In terms of pricing, there is a hobby account which is free and it is really free, there are no hidden costs. I used this one for a long time, probably one year or more, maybe even two years. Now I'm using the pro account because I have a lot of projects and I need analytics and some stuff like that. So we are putting here $20 for a pro plan, but if you have some hobby projects, you really don't need it. Like the name says, it's for professional usage only. Now in UI section, we are pulling out the big guns and that's ShedCN UI. I'm using it literally on every project that I work on and you have all the components you can imagine inside the ShedCN documentation. All the components are flexible, meaning you can do to them whatever you want. You own the code, you have it inside of your project and you can tweak around it, play with it, change, anything that you want to change. You can also choose the theme that you want and everything is working both in dark and light mode. Code editor. I'm using Cursor AI and I'm paying for it $20 a month. Most of the time I'm using it for code completion and for repetitive things. So here, for example, if I want to add another ordered list, I just press enter here and it's providing me list item, age one, hello world, etc. I can change here, for example, to paragraph, then here's providing me for the second one. So I'm avoiding writing a lot of code with my keyboard. It's doing things for me and I'm just pressing that famous tab and I'm getting everything from Cursor AI. Of course, this one is better for some serious functions and not for ordered list like this, but it's also handy for something simple like this, so you don't have to write it from scratch, always. Another thing is we have this AI right here, we can always ask him whatever we want, so we can say build a docs page, for example, and it's going to create everything. He knows what's going on inside of this project, he has all the context that he needs, he knows from package.json what are we using inside of our project, and he can create whatever we can imagine. So we can just press here, accept all, and he changed our page. So here we have now a docs page. He was following best practices, conventions, etc. And now we have a fresh start so we can build our documentation from this page right here. I think paying cursor is really worth it. I still want to test out Windsurf, which is $15. And I saw next that it's really great and it has a bunch of features. It's competing with Cursor and also if you'd like a free version, you have the Visual Studio Code Copilot which has some free options that you can take and use also completion and all other features from the Copilot. My favorite and easiest backend option is Next.js as a backend with server actions with Drizzle ORM controlling the queries and Neon 
to host the database. Server actions are really so simple. You just have a server component where you are bringing some data from the database and you have a client component where you are just calling that action. Everything is cached, so you don't even need React query or something like that. You can just use standard Next.js server action and everything is going to work automatically. So in the end, it looks something like this. This is from a real world project. So this is a server action where we have Drizzle ORM. With Drizzle, we are calling our database. We have relations here. We have where and everything that one ORM needs to have. And we are just returning the data. It cannot be more simple than that. And then we are using Neon to host our database. And as you can see here, we have a bunch of data stored on the Neon hosting service for databases. Neon is the only thing that you can here potentially pay and that's only with scaling. So if you have more than 0.5 gigabytes or compute hours, etc., it's going to auto scale to this launch plan. So here $20 with scaling, if you want to avoid that, you can always use just directly Postgres database. My new favorite authentication, better auth. It is very simple to use and free. I like to call it free clerk. I have this full implementation video on my channel. If you haven't seen it, you can check it out to see how easy it is to implement inside the Next.js application. It has email and password and all the social sign-on adapters that you can imagine. So try it, you're not going to regret it. For sending emails, I'm using resend. Implementation is really simple. You just use the resend API key and you can send the email with their API. Pricing is also based on scalability. So you have a free plan where you have 3000 emails a month, which is more than enough. I'm not using the pro version. I have still my free version and I'm using it for multiple accounts, for multiple projects, and I'm using the same API key. So I think this is really a great option for emails. So this is also $20 option with scalability. And I'm not sure if there is any email service out there that is totally free, if you know any, Tell me in the comments below. If I'm using AI in any way on my Next.js project, I'm always using Vercel SDK. It has all the famous AI models. You just need your AI API key and you can use them directly inside of your Next.js application. So if we want to create some completion bot, we can import open AI provider like this and then generate text from any prompt that we want. So we are getting the results from AI directly. Another feature that is really awesome is that you can create your own Zod schema and send it to AI. So he's providing an object with that same schema and you don't have to worry if the JSON is going to break or something like that. It's always confidently returning that schema that you asked him to return. And finally, for the payments, I'm using Stripe. If you'd ask me why am I using it, I really don't know. I think it's only because I have all this Stripe code that I'm constantly copy pasting in every project that I have. And I'm really searching for some new modern solution. And I think I'm going to try out this Polar, which I saw that is really now popular for payments in modern applications. I hope you enjoyed in this video. If you have any questions, I'm answering on all the comments below. And you also have a Discord channel. You have the invitation in the description. So we can talk there.